There's no such thing as business skills or money skills or even entrepreneur skills. In fact, most of the skills worth getting are a combination of micro skills. And more often than not, you'll find a particular set of micro skills in pretty much every big skill worth acquiring. In this video, we'll go over 10 of those micro skills, which we believe you should possess if you want to win the game of life. Welcome to ALUX. Let's start off the list with number one, articulating an idea. A lot of people have really good ideas. You probably do too, and you'll continue to have great ideas in your life. But one problem a lot of people are facing is their inability to articulate those ideas. And that's to say they can't effectively put things into words. They don't know how to explain it to other people. If someone asks them to present their idea in one sentence, they struggle. They look like they're not exactly sure what they're talking about, even if the idea is crystal clear in their mind. For some, it's a lack of vocabulary. For others, it's a poor understanding of concepts or framework. If you say LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network on the internet, People understand what that means, but if you say LinkedIn is like Facebook, but not really, and you can hire people there, but it's not a freelancing website, and a lot of important people are there, well, you didn't really say that much. And a quick tip on how to acquire this skill. Start journaling every morning for five or 10 minutes. Just write whatever comes across your mind. This teaches you to freeze your thoughts onto paper and get better at expressing exactly what you're thinking. Number two, getting people excited. Can you get people on board? Can you make an option feel irresistible? You've probably been in the presence of someone who, no matter what they propose, it sounds exciting. And even when it doesn't turn out to be that exciting, you still don't regret doing it. You somehow find a way to justify agreeing with it. The micro skill of getting people excited is mandatory for any person that needs to lead. Team leaders need to get their coworkers to move. Managers need to get their team leaders to act. CEOs need to make the managers perform. Look at anyone in an executive position and you'll find this micro skill present. Number three, selling the vision. This one is a combination of the first two micro skills with a pinch of sugar on top. Selling the vision means showing people the potential you see. You have the roadmap in your head. You've done the work, you see it happening. You're certain that with the right context and perfect moving parts, you can create something amazing. But do other people see it too? Can you convince them your vision is based on reality and not just fairy tales? At the end of the day, you can only go so far alone. And if you can't sell your vision to other people, you won't go that far. Number four, casual networking. We can't stress enough the importance of networking. We've talked about it countless times, but many people, they've got problems starting their network. Some people think that networking means going to big events, slap a name tag on you and introduce yourself to as many people as possible. We've seen it happen countless times and it's not that likely to get you anywhere. If you have no idea how to start your network, do this. Reconnect with people you've lost touch with without asking for anything. Then introduce people to each other. It's really that simple. You may have a friend who's now a lawyer and you haven't spoken to her in ages. You may have another friend who needs some legal advice. You ask them individually if they want to be introduced to each other and then you do it. You now know someone who you've helped in a situation and someone to whom you've given a client. This is usually how casual networking works. Number five, giving a little more than you take. You may ask yourself, why would I put myself in a position where people can take advantage of me? The answer is that people worth doing business with, they won't do that. That's because they too give a little more than they take. Giving more than you take means you're not looking for profit. You're looking for mutual profit. Give a little more to a client and they will always come back to you. 
give a little more in a relationship, and the other will do the same. It's a win-win. There is enough pie for everyone to eat. If you're constantly on the lookout for the quick buck, you will only make one buck. Number six, listening to the other side. You will never truly understand something if you don't hear both sides of the story. And unfortunately, the times we are living in now makes that incredibly hard. Social media feeds you content that you agree with. If you believe the sun will explode next year, well, that's what you'll see online. If you believe everyone got rich from some questionable crypto project, well, you'll only see that. That's a surefire way to get stuck in a bubble and you have no idea how the world works. For everything you're researching, make a conscious decision to listen to the other side as well. It may wake you up to reality or further convince you of your beliefs, but you've got to take a look at both sides to see the full picture. Number seven, focus bursts. People spend eight hours in offices, but around three hours actually working. Most of the time is spent waiting for something else, meetings, or your break. Nobody actually works eight hours straight on demanding tasks. Your brain can't handle that without massive losses in concentration and ability. The most creative and demanding tasks deplete your energy in about two to three hours. You need to be aware of that and give it your full energy. If you manage to focus 100% for two hours every day, you'll get more things done than most people ever will in an office. Number eight, Googling. And by this, we mean searching for reliable and pertinent information. Do you have any idea how many people are terrible at finding reliable information online? You could have avoided countless mistakes if you just Googled it properly. But this is such a simple micro skill that many people lack. It's impossible for someone to know everything about anything. But people get the impression that if they don't know something and have to Google it, that it makes them a fraud. Go ask programmers what's one of the most overlooked skills a coder should have. Smart people, they don't have all of the information, but they do know where and how to find it. Number nine. Handling rejection. Your negotiations went poorly. Your date laughed in your face. Your promotion ended up in a demotion. People get rejected all the time and they have such a hard time dealing with it. Eventually, many end up avoiding any kind of interaction so they don't end up feeling rejected again. Now, we could tell you that X entrepreneur was rejected 100 times before getting one deal and all that stuff, but we've got a better story for you. The story goes like this, and this actually happened. A freelance writer decided to run a little experiment. He rewrote an entire book that won the National Award in 1969. All he changed was basically the name of the author. He then submitted the book to a number of publications, including the one who published the original. And guess what happened? All of them rejected the book. Now, mind you, the original won the National Book Award. The lesson from this is that often people reject you not because you're stupid or your product is dumb. They do it because they don't have all of the information. They don't get it, or they themselves are kind of stupid. Everyone has their own problems to deal with. It doesn't make you any less. Number 10, how to fake your way into a room. We saved the best for last, Aluxer. You might be the best at what you're doing. You may have the right solution to everyone's problem. You have the answer people are looking for. But that doesn't mean that people will start knocking on your door. Often you need to give the door a little push. Faking your way into a room means putting yourself in a position where people will listen to you. Let's take Dropbox as an example. They pitched the product with a three minute video presentation with the production in action. But the video is fake. The product didn't actually exist yet. It was still in the works. But the video got them from 5,000 to 75,000 beta testers overnight. 
Now, we're not saying to fake what you can do. The Dropbox folks actually made the product afterwards. Opportunities don't come knocking on your door. You need to be the one who knocks. Sometimes you need to knock a little bit louder. It's a delicate process. And lastly, a bonus for watching this video until the end. To get noticed, you need to be unique, which is kind of hard if you're trying to force it and pretty easy if you're owning who you are. Everyone does things slightly differently. They work best in different environments. To figure out what works best for you, start by designing your own morning routine. And luckily for you, we've got the best video on how to design your morning routine, which you can check out by clicking in the top right corner or in the pinned comment. We'll see you tomorrow, Aluxer.